Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Well, it's finally driving season out here, so we are going to give the Miata some new life. No, I don't mean a new motor. I've done that before. I don't mean a turbo. Uh, that's kind of expensive. I really do mean lifeblood. We are going to put some new oil in the engine. Every race season, we pretty much burn the engine hard. The oil gets pretty bad, so it's time for some new stuff. Yes, I know it's cheap. So I'm well aware that you get an oil change at a place like Jiffy Lube, but it costs more than it should. So hit up your local auto parts store, get yourself some oil and a filter and a pan. Uh, luckily we had a pan, but mine unfortunately has a very dead spider in it, so I'm going to let that be there for now. But this is pretty much all you need to get your oil done. So that and a couple sockets, and you're good to go. Stop. The first step, and I mean the first step to changing your oil, is removing the fill cap. If you can't remove the fill cap, do not remove the oil. Because if you remove the oil, you cannot get oil into your engine. You're done. So first step, remove the oil cap. Step after you've bought and got all your supplies ready is to get yourself access to the drain pipe. Now only do this after your car has been off and cooled for a while because dealing with a hot engine is not fun and dealing with hot liquids that come out of your engine is even less fun. So once it's cooled off, find access. The Miata's is not on that side. Sorry for the background noise, that's my slider. The Miata's is right there. That is the drain plug that we are going to remove momentarily. In case that last angle didn't give you a good view, this is the front, obviously that's where the engine is, passenger side. Now the first step is just to break it loose. Do not remove it entirely or else all the oil will rush out. We just want to break that tension so we can get the drain pan in and then we'll remove the bolt further. Well, if you weren't having fun already, now it gets fun. So you get to test two things, your reaction time and your accuracy. We're gonna remove the drain plug entirely at this point, so the oil is gonna rush out. So get some splash protectants in the area and then get your pan ready. So do your best to aim, and then as soon as you see that come out, get your hand out of the way, because oil is kind of a pain to remove from clothes and everything else. So here we go. So once the oil is draining, make sure it's going to the pan and also take care of the actual nut that came out with it. Some cars have a crusher or um, a washer that's supposed to be crushed, the Miata doesn't so we do not have to go buy a new washer for this but double check to see if the bolt that comes out needs a crush washer or not just in case. Otherwise, make sure the threads are clean and once your oil is down to just a little bit of a drip, put the bolt back in and secure it with a torque wrench. One other life teaching point that I've learned, once that bolt is in, even before you torque it down, get the oil pan that you just put all the oil in as far away as possible. There's a good chance that you nudge it and then the oil spills everywhere, like the accent of all these. So move it away, Get out of the way, as far away as possible. Maybe I'm weird, but after the oil's out of the way, I do like to look at it to see if I see any films or discolorations, or if there's any like cool in it. And this looks pretty good, which means that nothing is crossing streams internally, which is great for our engine. Next up though, we have to put the oil filter on. So the oil filter is exactly what you think. 
it filters out particles and impurities that get into your oil system. And we wanna stop those before they cause any friction in the engine itself. So the oil filter is on the passenger side, just underneath the manifold. I'm tapping on it right here. It is kind of hard to see, but take that thing off. Carefully, there will be a little bit of oil in it, and then compare it to the new one to make sure it's about the same dimensions. Because if it's not the same dimensions, you got a bad oil filter. First thing you do with your oil filter though, to make a good seal is take a little bit of the new clean oil and rub it right around the edges, just like this. This oil is gonna help give it a good seal so none of that good precious oil leaks out of your engine onto whatever else. So give it a good run around, make sure it's lubed up, and then pour a little oil in the center to prime it. I did find a funnel, which is gonna make this job much more fun. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, really do recommend that you try to use a funnel because it will help eliminate a lot of the splatter and you can control the feed into the engine a lot quicker. So when you are pouring in the oil, go slowly because remember it's a vacuum on the inside now, or sorry, not a vacuum, but there's air on the inside right now, so it's not all gonna rush in immediately. It will back up as you can see in the funnel here. So take your time. I pour out about a quart roughly each time and then I stop for a couple seconds and I'm gonna listen and look underneath the car to see if I see any new oil coming down or to see or to hear for any drips or anything that seems out of the normal. So take it slowly because if you pour everything in simultaneously Oil can actually be expensive. Even this really low end jug was like 20 bucks at the local auto parts store. So take your time, listen, be smooth with the oil, and hopefully you only have to do it once. Make sure that bolt is in your oil pan. I promise you that though. Afterwards, you have a bunch of old oil, but the good news is that the local auto parts stores will almost always recycle it for free. So we need to put the old oil back into a jug. And so I was actually really proud of myself for this one. I actually did take the steps. And this is one of the few times I have ever been able to pour the oil without breaking the stream. But words of advice, again, since you are pouring oil, see if you can find something to splash all the extras onto just in case you're not as skilled as me. But otherwise, this is just my pour. It's a little bit of a humble brag, so. To make matters worse, it was a windy day, so this took some actual accuracy as well. It's no easy challenge. But otherwise, fill it up because you can't pour this down the storm drains, that's bad for the environment. Bring it back to the local oil shop. Here, one of the important steps is also to see the what's left in the oil pan afterwards. So our spider is still there, don't worry. But what we're looking for are small metal flakes, because again, that shows that there's metal on metal contact, which is bad, but it's not here. So we are in great shape right now. Super happy about it. Otherwise, make sure you label your old oil used and then bring it back to your auto store. And then last, but certainly not least, after you have run the oil a little bit through the motor, pull out the dipstick, clean it off, so get all the old oil off, and we're gonna have a nice bare piece of metal here. We're gonna check the oil level and the oil color to make sure that the new oil did take. So give it a little bit of a wiggle, stick it all the way in there, pull it back out, and I know it doesn't focus very well on here and that's mostly to blame for me, but you can see our oil is right there. It's clear and we're good to go. The Miata has new lifeblood and it's ready for the street again. Thank you for watching.